A vague old man with an umbrella, a jazz record that doesn't exist, and Haruki Murakami's baseball autobiography. We'll check out all this and more in this first look at Murakami's latest book, First Person Singular. Welcome back to Up Late with A.G. McDonald. If this is your first time here, I'm A.G. McDonald. I'm a writer and podcaster, and I was lucky enough to be approached by Knopf Publishing with an advanced copy of Haruki Murakami's First Person Singular, and I really wanted to talk about this book. Unfortunately, because they don't release the short story collection in English until April, I can't explore each story's specific moments. Instead, I figured I would give my first impressions of the book and my quick, relatively non-spoilery take on each. Eight stories make up this book, and in true Murakami style, neither is like the other. It's too hard to summarise, although that tends to be a problem with Murakami's work in general. The overall theme is about looking back on the past and reflecting on your life, but each story has a very different approach to the core theme. The first story, Cream, is a philosophy of life. It follows a male protagonist who receives an invitation from a woman he hasn't spoken to in a long time. When things don't go according to plan, his mind starts to wander and he reflects on his life in an abandoned park. There, he is met by an old man holding an umbrella with some cryptic advice. I wasn't sure what to expect with this one, but I think that's the best way to go into a Murakami story because you never know what you're going to get. By the end, I loved this story. In the hands of a lesser skilled writer, this story could have been a meandering mess, but Murakami manages to finish strong with that meaningful punch we've come to expect from his writing. On a Stone Pillow is also about a man who is looking back on his life, but this time he reflects on another Murakami staple. Sex. This melancholy entry sees a man meditate on a strange sexual encounter. While it shares similarities with Cream, it has a much darker, bleak tone, and in that way, it's almost the exact opposite of Cream. I enjoyed this story, and for the sake of cutting time, let's just assume I loved all the stories in this collection, but Cream did edge this one out just slightly. The third story, Charlie Parker Plays Bossa Nova, is where my favourite kind of Murakami appears, the one that dives headfirst into magical realism. I've made it pretty clear on this channel that my favourite Murakami novel is Kafka on the Shore, so you would know from my previous videos that I love to dissect the strange, weird and downright disturbing things in these stories. Charlie Parker might not reach the heights of Kafka Tamura's tale, but it does tell a bizarre story that leaves your head buzzing with questions. The story follows a man who, you guessed it, is looking back on his life, particularly his youth when he got his first writing job at an independently published university magazine. He writes a fictional article about a jazz album from Charlie Parker that never existed. The thing I also love about this story was the narrator opens by telling us he writes lies. So for the rest of the story, I contemplated whether it was magical realism or was the author a fantasist pulling the wool over our eyes as he had with his very first piece of writing. The next story, With the Beatles, named after the 1963 album, is about a young man who reflects on his youth framed through the Beatles music even though he isn't much of a fan. This short story is one of the deeper ones, and I think the second most likely to give me more out of the second read-through. We'll get to the first most likely in a moment. All I will say about this story is it gives a fresh perspective on growing old that feels genuine and refreshing. And after the most grounded and realistic emotional story, we are whipped back to Confessions of a Shinagao Monkey, which is pretty much how it sounds. This is another one with a magical realism component, and I can't wait to dive more into this. But this is one that I really can't go into without getting into spoiler territory. 
Carnival is another story named after a song, this time by a classical composer Robert Schumann. The most enjoyable part of this story, for me at least, is the same as Charlie Parker. It offers so much real world history. You get two stories in one. Murakami delivers the history of this music in such a fascinating way, but it also lends to the realism and credibility of the fictional world. The story begins with a man that strikes up a relationship with what he describes as the ugliest woman he's ever met. Again, a lesser writer could have written the protagonist as a garden variety misogynist, but Murakami puts a much more thoughtful spin on it. The main character doesn't say these things in a malicious or derogatory sense, but he has devised a whole system of logic on the subject. I won't go into the specifics because, well, as I said, I can't, but this story's strength was in its central character and his complex view of the world. The penultimate story, the Yakult Swallows Poetry Collection, is from Murakami himself. Some of the descriptions of this book posit that it could be a work of fiction, and while that could be true, everything in the story lined up with what I know of Murakami's life. I don't see any reason to believe that it is fiction. But Murakami talks about his own life, and much like his protagonists, he uses a framing device to glue the story together. This time he offers snapshots of his life through his favourite baseball team, the Yakult Swallows. This was a fascinating glimpse into Murakami's life, and reminded me in some ways of the article he wrote for The New Yorker, Abandoning the Cat. Finally we come to First Person Singular, which is seemingly the most straightforward story in the entire collection, but the story is a drug trip and I can't go into it at all without talking about spoilers. I also think this might be the one that benefits most from multiple readings. So that's my first impressions of First Person Singular, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you want more Murakami content, I have deep dives into Kafka on the Shore, Colorist Skudu Tazaki, and Killing Commentatore. I've also started an 11 part chapter by chapter deep dive into Kafka on the Shore. You can also find my deep dives into the life and fiction of H.P. Lovecraft and a more in-depth look at the Chaos Walking trilogy. If that sounds good to you, please consider subscribing to stay updated on the latest content and I will see you guys in the comments section.